middle class Americans were in better financial position in 1940 after a decade of the Great Recession than they are today. Americans are completely broke. They have nothing. They're living paycheck to paycheck. Fed doesn't understand the difference between legitimate economic growth that comes from underconsumption, savings, and investment, and a fo and phony growth, a bubble that comes from inflation, money printing, artificially low interest rates. Also, the government is making uh, horrific mistakes with the bailouts, uh, all of the stimulus programs, the extended unemployment, the Payroll Protection Act, the CARES Act, this ridiculous Heroes Act. what's going to happen to uh, the global economy, the U.S. economy in particular, the U.S. financial uh, markets, uh, the dollar, its status as the world's reserve currency, and what the implications are, not only for Americans, but for the rest of the world, when the dollar loses that status as the reserve currency, uh, and it's replaced, I believe it'll be replaced by gold. And I think a lot of the changes are going to happen, you know, over the next several years. and. You know, a lot of the problems uh, that exist in the global economy, you know, in general, but in particular in the U.S. economy, those problems have been building for a long time. Uh, in fact, we've succeeded, unfortunately, in kicking the can down the road for uh, many, many years, over a decade now since the 08 financial crisis. And all of the problems that led to that crisis are actually uh, worse now. The problems have been made bigger by the very policies that were supposedly implemented uh, to solve those problems. Because we had a financial crisis because we had too much debt. Uh, and rather than eradicating the debt, we took on a lot more and we simply inflated a bigger bubble. The financial crisis really kicked off after the real estate bubble popped and people who had borrowed money to buy homes could no longer afford or no longer had the desire to repay their mortgages. And that had profound impact on the lenders that caused the financial crisis. And of course that dragged down the entire economy. But rather than allowing the bad actors to be punished, we bailed them out. And instead of blaming the Federal Reserve uh, for inflating the bubble and blaming Fannie and Freddie uh, for the moral hazard, we basically rewarded the government with more power. We rewarded the Fed with even more power. And so since then, they did a lot more damage. I already said uh, from the beginning, from before the Fed even ended QE3, I said that QE4 would be larger than QE1, 2, and 3 combined. What I didn't realize is how quickly that forecast would come true because it's already larger. The Fed has already monetized more debt since it started QE4 than it did in the first three rounds of quantitative easing combined. That's because we had a much bigger bubble pop this time, and we are now uh, you know, uh, in the early stages of a much greater recession and a much deeper financial crisis than the one that we experienced uh, back in 2008. But a lot of people still haven't come to terms with this. Uh, they still think that you know, we can get back to where we were. That's impossible. We cannot go back to the way things were because the way things were was not normal. We were in a bubble and there is no way to go back to where we were. I was on television in the US uh, uh, forecasting that the rate hike we were about to get uh, in December of 2018 would be the last hike of the cycle and that the very next move that the Fed would make would be a rate cut. I was one of the only people really in the financial community who was making that call most people expected the Fed to continue hiking rates. Nobody thought that not only would they stop hiking, but they would actually cut. And it turned out that I was right. They did that. And I also said that after they cut rates, they would return to QE, which they did. All of this government spending is compounding the problems, making it harder for the economy to recover because government spending is a drag on economic uh, activity. It's a drag on the economy. It represents a tax 
on the private sector. It's a transfer uh, from the private to the public sector. Public sector is far less efficient. In fact, it's not even efficient at all. It's a complete waste. So we're taking resources that would have been used effectively, and instead we're having government squander those resources. Now, a lot of this is taking the form of inflation. People don't realize that the government is confiscating such a large percentage of the national income because they're not doing it honestly. They're doing it dishonestly through inflation. Right now, 55 cents out of every dollar the U.S. government is spending, it's getting from the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is printing 55 cents out of every dollar the federal government spends. That means the Fed is printing more money than the U.S. government collects in taxation. So Americans are not getting more than half of the government for free. We're still paying for all this government. We're just paying for all this government through inflation rather than through uh, more legitimate forms of taxation. But when governments fund themselves with a printing press, that's still a tax. It's just the government gets its purchasing power through an alternative route. So like when the government levies an income tax on its citizens and, and actually takes their money away from them, uh, uh, people have less money to spend because the government took it. And then the government gives that money to somebody else. And now that person who got the money can go out and spend it instead of you. The Federal Reserve, beginning really in 2015, in the fourth quarter of 2015, finally tried to raise interest rates up from zero and normalize them, something which I said from the beginning would be impossible. And that, you know, that forecast was, was proven correct when the Fed was forced to abandon its efforts to normalize interest rates when they only got back to about two and a half percent, which was about half of where they were before the Fed cut them to zero. And that really happened in the fourth quarter of 2018. That's when we had the worst drop in the US stock market since the Great Depression on a quarterly basis. Uh, basically, uh, everything started to implode. Uh, it would have continued had the Fed remained on its course of shrinking its balance sheet and trying to normalize interest rates. So instead, the Fed did a complete about face it started to cut interest rates and it started to grow its balance sheet uh, through uh, the, uh, the Fed funds market, uh, trying to continue to artificially suppress interest rates because they had risen to a point where a overly indebted US economy could no longer afford to pay, even though the rates were still low by historic uh, uh, norms, the amount of debt was high, extremely high. And so we, you cannot afford a normal rate of interest on an abnormally large amount of debt.